Before we can become master snake surgeons, we must first understand the basic anatomy of a snake. And to do that, we need to go back in time before Python even existed. Legend says that Python was built using an ancient language called C. It was supposed to be a so-called low-level language, something that connects closely to the machine underneath. Most modern scholars believe C is just a myth. But some dare to say it actually existed. C is dated back to the Ice Age when a civilization that built its computers in stone vanished, taking the ancient knowledge of C with it. But not all is lost. The language that they built for us was easier and friendlier. And while there are still things modern humans don't understand about Python, there is also hope. If you look into the belly of the beast, you'll notice that some of the structure is connected by things that scholars call dunders. Welcome to the second episode of Skinning the Snake, where we'll uncover the mystery behind dunders and we'll learn how to use them to safely explore the forgotten depths of Python. Common people call dunders magic, but not you. You are looking for a deeper understanding, you want to know how they work. To better visualize Danders, we'll need a character that's strong and reliable like they are. Let's call him Dunder. The first Dunder you usually come across is init. Most classes that you create will use Dunder init to provide initial values to class attributes. As you might have guessed, this process is called initialization, hence dunder init. You define dunder init like any other method. The only special thing about it is that Python will run it whenever you create a new instance of this class. Dunder init shouldn't return anything. Instead, it should mutate self, which is the barebones class, without attributes. Wait a second. I already knew about dunder init. What's so special about those dunders? Mm, nothing really. Dunders are just attributes and methods whose names start with two underscores so that they don't collide with custom methods and attributes you might want to use in your code. They're like a um, hidden pil pillar that keeps it all together. You usually meet Danders when creating custom classes or inspecting classes and functions. They are one of the essential tools for understanding how Python works. So, yeah, this video exists mostly for when one of you inevitably asks me, but what is this dander? No, 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 don't, don't, don't close it yet. I promise fun jokes and interesting facts. There's a lot of easy stuff, so I'll be brief and I'll speak quickly. No need to introduce dander name. You know dander name equals dander main, and while dander main is just the name of the file you're currently running, dander name is how we access that name, in this case the name of the module you're in, as opposed to the name of the module you're importing. Module or file, modules and files are kind of the same. In Python at least. So then we look into the dunder name of any other object and we will also get its name. Or if you want to see its full family tree, well, family palm tree? Then you can use dunder call name. Next dunder! You might have written comments, but have you used doc strings? Those are written with triple quotes, and if you put them right in the beginning of something, yes, basically anything, you can then access them through your ID. But most importantly, through dunders. Specifically, dunder doc. It works in classes, functions, 
and even modules. Remember Dender main? Same case here, just put it anywhere and get the documentation as a string in your code. Next Dender, have you ever wondered how Python functions remember the values of their global variables? When you import them, they somehow know that the temp variable is the temp variable from their module, not the one you forgot to remove. Take a guess, it's a dunder. Dunder globals, each function has one, and it contains a reference to the globals dictionary for a particular module. Each module has exactly one globals dictionary. By the way, almost Everything in Python is underneath a dictionary, even classes. Next, Dunder. We already know that the variables are stored in the globals dict, but what about class attributes? As you might have guessed, they're kept in the Dunder dict, but classes are so much more than just dictionaries. There is inheritance, dunder bases, methods which are kept in the classes dunder dict, as opposed to the instances one, and all of the multitudes of features implemented in many other dunders. Yes, there's a lot of them, but don't feel overwhelmed. You don't even need to know about dunder init to start coding in Python, and if you're here, you probably already know this and that. Unless you're a package developer, odds are you will only see and use the most basic dunders. Remember iterators from the last video? You can make your class into an iterator by providing it with dunder iter and dunder next, but should you do this? In most cases, using a list comprehension or a generator will make your life so much easier. And you shouldn't ever run dunder next directly. Next function exists for a reason. Not everything, however, needs a use case to be useful. There are moments when just knowing a tiny bit more about what runs beneath the facade of words and symbols makes a difference. Programming languages are not just simple tools. They're living organisms made by thousands and thousands of people. And they are constantly evolving. And danders? Danders are just another piece of the puzzle. A bunch of functions and variables with their names starting with a double underscore. Double underscore. Double un. Da. Dander? <laughs>